Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, and welcome to another episode of Actors Daily Bread. Today, I have a wonderful special guest. <laughs> if I sing her name, if I sing it, then you know that's really special. Uh, Kina Ferguson. Hey. Hi. If you have been watching Actors Daily Bread for a while, you will recognize her. I have to, I don't know, I don't remember what episode number it was, but you did one with me. We did it at your house. Yeah. We were talking about who knows what we were talking about. We were just in the middle of keeping each other accountable and in That's the right. throes of the industry. But for those of you who didn't get to see her before, Kena Ferguson is a friend of mine. She's my accountability buddy. She's an amazing actress, choreographer, voiceover actress, producer, writer, director. And now adding on top of all of that, she's really, really been going hard in the paint for coaching other creative people on how to create their own content. Mm -hmm. So I, we've been talking in our schedules. I've been crazy. Keena's wow. a new mom and holding out her career. And so finally we, this is why it's not live, guys. But make sure you leave your comments. Uh, listen, Actors Daily Bread is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. And for all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up, replay watchers? Love you guys. So make sure you leave your comments so that Keenan can respond, and then I can respond. And if you miss any part of this, just play it back. It'll be available on the podcast, the Hollywood Bound Actors podcast, and on my YouTube channel. So Keenan. Yay. Introduce yourself to those who don't know you. Where are you, like, where are you from? Like, what's, what's a little bit of your story? Yeah, so I'm from Jefferson City, Missouri. And um, I went to college at The Ohio State University. I was a dance major there. And then four days after graduation, I moved to Los Angeles to pursue my dreams and goals of being, let's just say, an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And so I started dancing for a bunch of artists and commercials and tours and those kind of things. Then I transitioned into doing a season of a BT show with Ricky Smiley. And then from there, it kind of just went into commercials, more dancing, more TV, film. And then there became a point where um, I did a three woman show with two other girls and that took off where we toured. Our show, we wrote it, we produced it, we directed it, we created these characters. And then that kind of gave me the, the bug where then I was like, well, I have another idea and it's for a film and I really want to do it, but could I, I couldn't do that. And then I did. And then there was a huge success with that. And then that kind of carried me into being like, oh, I am also a writer. I am also a producer. I am also. And I also realized that people saw me as that and then that just kind of took off. And so now here we are doing all things creative, which is uh, where I thrive and live and feel joy. Yeah. Didn't you even have like a one woman show where you won, like you were like nominated or something? And so there was some NAACP award situation. There was. I did win an NAACP award for best one person <laughs> okay, show. Okay, okay, okay. And I was nominated in five other categories as well. And um, and um, that show was also selected to be a part of the National Black Theater Festival. Um, so yes, that also happened. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to a mutual friend of ours, Jamie George. Yes. Who's a wonderful connector. You know, we all have people who connect other people in our lives. And Jamie George, shout out to her. She was just like, when I moved back to LA, the top of 2017, she was like, you need to know my friend Kina. She's a doer, you're a doer, you need to know each other. And you and I met for tea, coffee at M Street Coffee out in the, in the valley. And we just like, okay, look, I'm about my business. You about your business? Like, it was so much like- It was so good. But we connected and just, it's that, it's that thing I'm always talking to my audience about accountability. Yes. And, you know, sometimes even the even the people who are very focused and driven, we all need a help a helping hand and or someone to just keep you on track because this industry is not for the faint of heart. You know. No, and I think that's so important that you even said that because it's something that I'm sure other actors and entertainers in general just deal with. I'll just I just like to say creatives because you think that because you're you've been doing it or you know that you don't need help. And it doesn't mean that just because you're doing it, you don't also need someone to hold you accountable and to also help you. Right. And I think that's super important. That doesn't matter what level you get to, you still need someone to be like, girl, you still got this. Yeah. Because every day, some days, <laughs> I know when Keena and I would keep each other accountable, like, what are you doing this week? Are we going to do some drop-offs? Like, there were some days where it's just like, 
oh, I fell behind or, you know, feeling down in the dumps. It was just natural. And I like being very transparent with all of you because sometimes some of you who are aspiring to be where maybe some other people are, you have misconception that they don't go through the same things that you go through. So that's why I like to just be very forthright. Ooh, yes. <laughs> I'm like, you know, people that people look at and see and go, Ooh, and you're like, you don't know their story. Right. You don't know their story. You know, that actually leads me to, you know, there are so many moments as creatives, not just actors, but as creatives where we feel moments of powerlessness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like something about creative, creating content for yourself or being a part of something that you work in the creation process of maybe with other people, doesn't it feel like it adds a bit of like empowerment to your life? Like you're not just sitting and waiting for the phone to ring. Why, in your own words, why do you think content creation is important for us? Well, a couple of things. Um, one, it is important because if you're a creative, then that means that you have ideas and stories flowing in you. And I feel like there's no need for those things to stay bottled up in you. It's kind of like the old acting exercise where like, if you were looking down on yourself and you were dead, what are the things that you would say to yourself, right? Would you want to leave all those ideas in your head and, and no one ever got to see them? Another thing is that there are all these different um, icebergs in the world, right? These different people who are looking for their club and you don't know that your idea speaks to that club. You know, I like to use the idea of, um, and you may not even heard of this, but there's a guy who used to do this. He was a kid and he used to do these little um, fruits that would talk and he was called Fred. And then people started watching them and people started watching them and then Nickelodeon picked it up and then it became a movie. And I hadn't even heard of this. And then yeah, I found you, it. Did he have like a really high pitched voice or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And like, even to this day, you could say his name, you could say that to 40 people and maybe one would be like, yes, but there's a whole iceberg of people and this dude is making millions of dollars. And so I say that to say that like, you go find your iceberg, go find your club, like whatever your story idea is, there is someone who wants to hear it. There's a group of people that want to hear it. And so to me, if you're an entertainer and you're creative, it's your duty to get stories out there to tell that, right? So yes. That's one thing that I think it's important. But yes, it's also empowering in the sense of you can sit at home and you can wait for that phone to ring, but the real true gift is what do you do when that phone isn't ringing? How are you using your gifts then? Right. And if you're only using your gifts when the phone is ringing, you're missing out on so much of what being a true entertainer, true creative is. And, and I will say content creation isn't for everybody. Right. If you don't have the heart at all to do it and you're like, I don't, I just don't want to, then maybe that's not for you. You know what I mean? However, I feel like everybody gets to the point where they no longer want to only be told what to do and what to say, but they want to have a voice in what mm. they say and what they do. Yes. And that's a word. At that point, you need to create content. That is a word right there. I have some of my actors who are, who work with me in my inner circle membership that's a main component of it. And what I will say is it is also the most scariest component for mm -hmm. every one of them. So I want to, I don't want to skip over that because I can tell you some of the biggest objectives that come across my clients' mouths. It has come across my own at, at some point is I'm not a writer. Like I, I'm not a writer. I, isn't, don't you have to write your own stuff? That's not what I'm good at. Like, and so they stop the, the whole train stops there. Can you speak to that? Because I hear that most times. Yes. Well, here's the thing that on any set you're on, even as an actor, it's all collaboration. So the, the beauty of it is you don't need to be a writer. If you have the idea, then you go get a writer. You go partner with someone. You, if you're not a producer, then you find a producer. If you don't want to direct and you just want to act, it's the beauty of collaboration, right? But I think that gives people the, the out to go, see, this is why I can't do it. Right, I'm absolutely. not a writer. So see, I have this idea, but no one's going to write. I got to pay somebody and then it, I don't have the money. So did it. And so then it stops them, right? Whereas the real attitude should be, I have this great idea and I know there is somebody who can't wait to write an amazing script and that all they want to do is write. They don't want to act. They don't want to direct it. They just want to write a great script and I've got the idea for them. So, so that could be like, how about checking your network? If you're part of all these Facebook groups or even on your Facebook page, like saying, hey, 
I'm looking for writers or uh, do I know any writers? Do I know any directors? And as soon as you say that, there's going to be a ton of people that are going to say, yes, I'm a writer. Yes. And, and here's the thing. I speak to this a lot, but passion is so important, right? Because your passion is it transfers to other people where then people go, well, gosh, I want to be a part of that too. Mm -hmm. If you're like, I don't write, but I'm, I need somebody to write my script and I, I, nobody wants to be a part of that. <laughs> nobody wants to do that. Right. But what? the person that's like, I've got this great idea and I haven't done this before, but I know that this idea is important and this is what it is. It's blah, 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 blah. I'd love to collaborate with you on that and see how we can make some magic together. Right. Yeah. That fuels somebody else to go. Yeah. You know, I, I would actually love to do that. Because that's how it all starts anyway. It all, it all begins with somebody else has a great idea that says, I believe in your idea and I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. And I have to testify to that. You know, when I lived in Los Angeles the first time and I was like many of you, I, was, I had an agent who never called me. I didn't have a gig. I was just savings dwindling. And I had a, I had a coach and I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a short film. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I'm going to try. And I'm going to embrace good enough. And I'm just going to embrace done versus perfect, right? And I remember I literally, Kina, put an ad on Craigslist, like looking for a DP, looking for, and this lady who didn't know me from Adam agreed to meet with me for tea. And she read my script and was like, I want to help you. And I'll be your line producer. And I happen to know this person and that person. And then I found a couple of, and and then I didn't even put the money up. Like somebody else read the script and was like, oh, I like to be a producer. Like it was just one of these things that just started to unfold. So I really, what you're saying is so true because I would assume that's one of the biggest myths or misconceptions. Um, what, what would be if there were maybe two other misconceptions or myths about content creation? And you know what, before we get there, how do you define content creation? Because maybe it's, maybe we're going too broad, too right to macro to the beginning. So right. let me just piggyback on something you said really quickly, even though I know you're not supposed to technically piggyback. So the thing is, is that the same way that you want to create something, there are millions of other people out here who also want to create. You're not the only person that is sitting at home going, gosh, I have this great idea, but I wish I had somebody who write. There's a writer sitting at home going, God, I, don't, I just wish I could write something for other people. Like, that's not my thing. I just, I want to be told what to write. And there's a director sitting going, like, if I could just start directing small projects, everybody is sitting at home. So if everyone's just sitting at home saying that and no one's reaching out, nothing is getting done. Right. But the minute you start reaching out, people want to help people. And I'm sure that everybody has seen a film or a web series or something where you're like, how did they get that money to do that? That, right. like somebody gave it to them. Right. And there's people out there waiting to give you money, to give you resources, to give you whatever it is that you need. It, you just have to ask, mm -hmm. right? So what are the other myths and misconceptions? The other myths and misconceptions are that you need a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Do you need some money? Yes. But one of my expertise and one of the things that I'm brilliant at is taking whatever small amount of money you have, right? Mm -hmm. And making your stuff look top notch. Being able to take what you have using resources that I have, that you have, other creative ways that I go about tailoring it to you, to making your project look like a big budget project on a very small budget. I love that. Right? So that's, one, that's the other thing is people feel like they need all of this when it's not true. Right? And then I think that the other things people also are like, well, who's going to see it? Right. Who's going to see it? Then what? Right? And that's also... Not it again, because there's icebergs out there. Does it take marketing? Does it take planning? Yes. But one of the things that I like to say is you start from the back forward. So what are the goals for your content creation? Mm -hmm. What are those goals? When you decide what those goals are, then you can better plan for how you are going to market or get it to whoever you want to get it or pitch it. Or if it's streaming versus festivals, if it's whatever it is that you're deciding. Right. So versus if for those to, to expound a bit more for people listening or watching, it's like, is this a YouTube series or is this something I want? Is this a short film that I want to get in festivals? Is right. it just something I'm using to promote myself? Right. Is it something, is it something that, that you want BuzzFeed to pick up to see if they'll showcase once a month? I don't know. Whatever right. that is, though, that's going to decide what your trajectory is for your project. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And if you're listening and watching at home and thinking like, uh, I still don't know how I'm supposed to figure that out. Well, that's why you have content creation coaches like Kina, um, because Lord knows I don't have the answer for that. However, what I do know is just the importance of doing something and creating your own way. You know, I had a Q&A call tonight with my Booking Magnet Academy members and somebody said, what else can I do besides wait on my agent to call and submit on Actors Access all day? And I'm like, you can be creating something, brainstorming something. And I think, again, embracing good enough and just starting with an idea. That's it. And, and can we remember that, can we remember that when you are at home and you're waiting on your phone to ring and you sit and you start writing or you sit and you start doing something in motion begins other things in motion. Right? Yes. So there's that happening, but also what do you learn by creating story? Oh, now I understand why when I go on this audition, why this character does, why my character does this because it falls into the story this way, because when I'm writing my story at home, I realize that this character does it. So it also makes you a better actor a better storyteller. It also helps you when you're starting to put together a a film or a series, whatever it is, it helps you to understand your place in the world as an actor. Yes. Yes. And so who doesn't want to be empowered? Who, who doesn't love an actor who can get on set and understand everything that's happening between chemistry, between characters, producers, when people change up lines at the last minute or why this scene may get cut, you have a better understanding as opposed to being like, it's me, 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 me. It's my scene. It's my scene. It's my scene. Right. Right. And I think you said something just now that I I hope people caught. When you do have the opportunity to be on set, when you are a hired, when you are the hired talent, this is why it's important to not always run into your trailer and hide. This is why it's important to to peep what's going on, see what they're doing in Video Village. Notice how the script supervisor is making her notes. Notice how the grips are doing their thing. How are they lighting it? You know what I mean? What do you feel like is working or what do you wish would be different? Like that's the perfect training ground. Instead of hiding, just running to craft services and going to your trailer. (laughs) I know. This is what you do. There's so much to learn. And, you know, I I have some friends who, you know, they're on shows and they've asked, hey, can I shadow you? Can I shadow you as a director? Can I shadow you as a script supervisor to to see what it's like to put on those hats? Absolutely. Um, This is so, so, so helpful. Would you say, because this is something you and I as friends, something you've been holding me accountable to. And I was like, Keen, I just got to finish my book. I got to get my book out. And then before the end of 2019, I'm, I'm working yes. on this project for myself. Um, do you think there's a way to tell or is there a process when, you, when you're sitting down with one of your coaching clients, how to know what is the best medium for them to start with? So let me say it this way. So maybe they're not, you're dealing with an actor, let's say who necessarily is not trying to write a pilot, you know, to sell, but is just trying to figure out what might be the best medium to showcase them to the industry. Is there, would you say there's an easiest route out of all the methods that you're, that you coach people on that can get this quickest return or the quickest completion? Right. I don't like to use the term easiest because I don't tend to work that way. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that if you're, prime reason to um your primary reason to shoot something is because you're saying hey i want to be seen in a different light and Mm -hmm. i want to showcase that then that doesn't require a whole film that requires a scene right Mm -hmm. a well-written scene which is the step that people miss a well-written scene that still has a beginning middle and end Right. right that is still shot in a beautiful location, that is still shot well, we can hear you, it looks quality, so that it looks like it came from an actual show or movie, right? Right. I would say that is probably the shortest route to go because it doesn't require um, all the marketing things because what you're doing is you're using it as a calling card the way that you would use your reel or the way that you would use postcards. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I would say that's probably, but what I find is that people do that work and they want more and they're like, well, God, now I feel like this, I mean, I feel like this isn't enough because then I could do this. And it's like, right. you kind of get the itch and you want to kind of turn it up. Right. But right. I would say if your prime reason is like, I do not create content at all, but my, 
agents think I should do, blah, blah, blah. Then I would say, then decide on what that is that you want to be showcased as and find a way to showcase that in some small snippet, right? right? And whatever that snippet is, decide still who it is that you're trying to get to see that and how you're going to get them to see that. Right. I think I talk a lot about to my students about training the industry how to see you and we naturally get you know people hate the word typecast but listen it is what it is like we all we all fit in in this industry in our own special way Mm -hmm. but I do get the 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 need and the desire to say hey I I I believe I can do something else but it's going to be your job to show us that because at, at the surface this is how we see you. So then that's that. So I love that because for those of you listening and watching, I feel like that's a really good tangible first step, thinking about what maybe you you or your team feels like is missing in your arsenal. And maybe the first step is creating a, a dynamic scene or working with a company or other people. Because at the end of the day, you know, a five minute scene could have also been a five minute short film, but it could also lead into a 10 minute short that now takes you to festivals and has a life of its own. And that definitely happens. I mean, that's happened. A a DP that I work with a lot, he um, had a character that he was doing in acting class. The acting teacher was like, you guys should record this. They recorded it. It became really big on YouTube. And then they got their literary agents because of that. Wow. So, You know what I mean? Like there, you don't know where it's going to go, which is why you do everything in excellence, right? Which is why no matter what you're doing it in excellence because you don't know where it's going to take you. And and that is why I say, no, everyone isn't necessarily a content creator, right? Some people are like, my agent just said I need to, maybe that's not for you. Maybe Mm -hmm. you are to be in a different part of the content creation. Mm -hmm. But I just believe that if you look at all the big celebrities, At some point, they all become producers, they all become directors, they all become writers, because you do want more than just to be told what to do, which is basically what actors are. Yeah. How do you feel about, and just a couple more questions before we wrap, and before I can, people can find out how to learn more about you. With the age of social media, especially Instagram and Facebook and, and YouTube, how do you feel like that has affected content creation there's so many people who only use instagram to put up you know one minute videos and they're building and i'm gonna say the word they're building a brand or they're building a you know something that they're getting known for have have you seen that impact shows that get picked up or people who get gigs like just in your in your in from your expertise i will say that only slightly like it's interesting because people talk so much about social media and these influencers and all this thing but the things that the numbers that have come out and the research that's come out it has been told that if you take a social media influencer somebody who has their brand and you try to transfer them to tv or film it does not make a difference Hmm. It does not transfer and then all of a sudden they see a spike in the numbers on that show this week or they see a spike in the box office or they see it doesn't actually transfer that way, right? So that's why it is important to know what is your medium? Are you like, listen, I just want to talk for one minute and put it on Instagram. That's all I want to do. Right. That's different than someone. And I think you, you kind of asked this earlier, maybe content creation is too broad, Right. Everyone has a different lane. Some people are like, I'm not necessarily trying to do a short film. That's not my, that's not my lane. My lane is I do quick commentary on the person who walks across the street every day for 45 seconds. That's my content creation. Mm-hmm. And that is a very specific niche thing that goes to your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever, right? right. Where I, whereas there are other people who do kind of a docu-series type thing that is more of a unscripted series, if you will. So I think it's also important to figure out how you want to be seen in general, right? Issa Rae was wanted to be seen in a very specific way and she created something that put her there, mm-hmm. right? So I just think that um, has it affected content? Not as far as TV and film, if you're talking about the actors. Has it affected what is accepted? Yes. I do think that the way, what it has done is opened up the spectrum for content creators with these unique and original story ideas that may not have been mainstream and taken them mainstream. Yeah. That's the beauty. 
Yeah. And because you can find them wherever they live. So if they, if they live, cause we all have, we all go down that rabbit hole. Some of us, we watch the same people on Instagram every day or on YouTube. I know I do. Mm-hmm. And, and they're not all actors. Yes. But I tune in. Right. Because, you know, all these platforms are networks, so to speak. You know, they're, 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 there are versions of CBS, NBC, you yeah. know, and understanding that that power exists and that is something we have access to. Um, I, think that what, I think that what social media has also done is just allowed the bigger networks and streaming services to see what those numbers look like, to see that there is that audience. So whereas before, if you tried to sell... I don't know, some big diversity show on whatever mm-hmm. networks would have been like, nobody's watching that. We right. can't sell that. But now you can point to social media and go, I've got 25 point K people who watch this every single day. So this actually will. Right. Or as a content creator, if I create something, I can then point to these social media influencers or this social media sites and go, well, I don't know about these numbers, but these people are watching it every day and they're waiting for something to come on TV that looks like that. Yeah. Well, either you can snatch that up or it can stay on Instagram here and somebody else will snatch it up. Somebody, and somebody. So that is where it has affected it. That's, I found it so interesting. Either way, it's very, for me, it excites me. It's very empowering. I'm still in the place of figuring out what I want to do next. Like, and I love the idea of just saying, what do I want to do next? You know, like not, I hope my agent calls me and I can do something fun next. Oh, right. <laughs> right, right. Right. And that's why I say it depends on what kind of creative you want to be. You know what I mean? Like you, I can, you, by you saying that statement, it's like you enjoy the process. You're like, what do I want to do next? That excites me that I have no idea what it's going to be, but gosh, when I get it, wow, that's going to be great. Oh, and then the journey of putting it together and figuring it out. Right. Yeah. I mean, everyone doesn't have that. And that's why it is important to be super specific. Like, is this something that you want to do? Mm-hmm. Are you, do you, what are you, what is the story? What is the passion? What is the, the oomph to do it? Yeah. And, you know, if for those of you watching and listening, I just think, again, I've said it, I'm going to keep saying it, embrace good enough. Your first thing that you try may not be Oscar, an Oscar winning project, but I think, and I speak for myself who created a short film, it wasn't great. The sound sucked, you know, it's like, but I learned. I learned and I have fun in the process. Like, I think also understanding like so much of our careers, Kina, is like, feels like work, daunting. Oh, I got to do this. And I'm still trying to live my life and it's affecting me emotionally. I didn't get that part. And, uh, you know, like finding the fun, right. <laughs> finding right. the flow and the fun in this, I think is essential too. Yes. When- you know, when you work with people, when people first come to you, and, I'm, and don't worry, guys, I'm going to give you, if you're watching this video, I'm, her link is above or below, and listening on the podcast will give you the link in a moment. But when you first work with somebody, when someone first comes to you, do you tell them, like, hey, do a brain dump, let me hear it all, any of your ideas? Like, when someone is ready to come to you, what do they need to prepare, or do they need to have anything prepared? So, actually, it depends, because I work with people in all stages. Okay. So I have a client now on the East Coast who is an author and she's just turned one of her books into a film. So I'm actually working with her on script coverage because her script is done, but it needs work, right? I have other people who've come to me who their film is already complete, but now they're trying to figure out the best way to get it out. Okay. Then I have people who come to me and say, I don't know. I just, I want to create content, but I don't know where to start. And then that's where I usually will ask those questions. What medium do you want to do? And what are the first stories that come to your mind that you want to talk about? So it does depend. And then I have people who are like, I've got a, I've got a script and I've got a director and I've got some money, but I, I don't know how to do that. And what I like to say is I am kind of a, I'm a puzzle, I'm a puzzle maker, right? You know? I take all the pieces that you have that may seem scrambled and I'm able to seam line them together to create a beautiful puzzle. Or some people are just missing a couple links that Mm -hmm. need to be done, you know? And so I'm able to kind of link those things up and tie them up and then move on your way. So it really does depend on where you are. I I love that. Um, Where can people find more about you? I know you have something special for my audience to give away a little trinket that can get some more ideas flowing. Yes. Um, Just a little guide that will help them to 
kind of start putting things in order to move down the line for content creation, yes. Okay, great. And what is that link for, especially so we can have it for audio? Yes, so nowgogetitdone.com. Now go get it done. Now go get it done. Stop <laughs> talking about it, now go get it done, right? You are such a friend of mine. Now go get it done, okay? Right. I don't have time. Just go get it done now. Okay? <laughs> um, and that's exactly why my business is called that. Cause that's all I want people to do is go get it done. Go get it done. And, and don't be, don't freak out if you don't know how to get it done. You can, you have Kena Ferguson as a resource. Okay. Um, so again, if you're watching, click the link above or below. Um, we'll put these in the show notes. Now go get it done. done. Now wait, say it again. Now go get it done.com. I was about to add another now. I was about yeah. to say, now go get it done kina thank you so much again you she is an amazing you've probably heard her voice on video games and all kinds of stuff you don't even know you've heard it i mean she's you can check her imdb she works all the time and some of her own content creation again has won awards and she's been on her projects have been on hbo i mean it's just i'm so inspired again as a friend and as you know, just someone who is just watching from the outside. So if, if, if Kina resonates with you, check her out, get, at least get the guy, get the workbook because yes. it will, I got to read it myself and it got some ideas flowing and it made me say, Hey, I have a few more questions. What do you mean by this? And how can I take this further? So I think it'll help each and every one of you as well. Yes. And I think that the, I think like I was saying before, for me, the thing, the thing is, is that um, it can get done regardless of what your budget is. And um, I always like to say when I was uh, nominated by HBO, my film was the least expensive film out of the other four. Out of, so I was top five. My film was the least amount that I spent. Mm -hmm. Everyone else's films were in very high numbers. And to me, that wasn't necessarily like, it's not like, look at me. It's more like, look what you can do with a little. Gotcha. Wonderful, wonderful testimony. Hang around for a second, Kina. I'm going to stop this recording. Everyone, follow Kina on all the. So what What are you on social? On Instagram, I am Kina Star everywhere. K E E N A Star everywhere. Kina Star everywhere, and I'll put that in the links here too. Kina, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. All right, everybody, follow Kina Ferguson. Get the guide, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.